Hello and welcome back to the Villa Filler podcast. I'm here as always with my good friend Dan Wiseman. How are you doing, bro? Very good, mate. Very good indeed. It feels like we're in a good spot now, mate. You've, you're back after a well-earned rest. Well-earned rest indeed. You work very hard on this podcast and in all other forms of life, mate, with the day job as well and everything like that. So very hard and rest. I'm very interested to hear all about that. Um, but yeah, hopefully we're in a little bit of a spot now where I can't think of anything that should separate us anymore. So I've, I'm, I'm away sort of uh, mid-August. Mid I go away. So we've got a little while until then. Um, where are you off to? I'm off to sunny Seville, mate. Oh, Very lovely, excited, lovely stuff. Um, but yeah, tell all, mate. How was Rome? You you were chasing up Dougie's agent somewhere. <laughs> you, I imagine, for five days. <laughs> do, you, do you know what it is, mate? Do you know what it, I know? We spoke about it. It's probably about a month ago now, when we was kind of talking. We we briefly touched on the Tammy situation, didn't we? And we were saying, you know, why why wouldn't like why would he want to come back? Why why should he not just stay in Rome and you know just live out this? wonderful lifestyle when he's scoring all the goals he's winning trophies he's getting all these accolades out in Roma and I've got to be honest mate if Douglas Louise wants to go on a personal level I'm all for it mate because he's gonna have a lovely time it's a wonderful city um it's a truly beautiful place and I can I can totally see why players want to live there and 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 move there and and, and play their football in the Serie A because there's some there's some beautiful places and I mean would you rather live in Sutton Coalfield or Rome? It's not a difficult question, is it, mate? It's not a difficult question. No, absolutely not, mate. Absolutely not. And that's why, uh, yeah, man, it's it's so important that guys like Tommy go over there and, and blaze a trail, especially in Italy, which has had, had its, you know, it's, it's hard to really understand the, the gravity of a, a sort of young black English player going over there and having such a profound impact where others have, have received abuse and everything like that. So he's blazing a really important trail at the moment. So I think we've both sort of said that uh, taking our Villa hats off, we'd love him to stay out there and continue doing the fantastic work that he's doing on and off the pitch. Um, but yeah, to, to live in that city must must be amazing, mate. It's one that I know uh, has won us both over now. So um, yeah, maybe there's an away day in the future. I hope so. Fingers crossed, mate, to the Olympico. <laughs> If not, we'll just call this the Roma Filler Podcast. We'll just, yes. we'll just change our allegiances, mate. Why not? What a place. What a Have you ever seen my Totti tattoo? Or is it now, now a good time to get that out? <laughs> we'll, save, we'll save that later on. We need, we need people to yes. watch for longer. We need the, we need the watch time up. Yeah, so yeah, keep that right sure. to the end, guys. Um, but no, it's, 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 it's a stunning place, mate. Thank you. I know, I know you loved it very much when you went. Um, but no, it's, it's good to be back. And obviously, mate, there's been this news dropped on us and it's something that I know privately we've spoke about quite a lot over the past probably three years really mate um, and it's finally happening when it comes to the redevelopment of the North Stand Villa Park the project that is making Aston Villa one of Europe's most elite clubs venues etc and so forth and do you know what? I woke waking up this morning, mate, and you see that six minute video of Christian Perso, and it happens every time. He speaks so well, and it just infuriates me. It just it does my head in because he is loving every single second. He's there in his cream suit with his white t-shirt on, looking like he's come straight from Miami and touched down to Birmingham to do this interview specifically. And it's all just it's all just an exercise of massaging his ego. Um but he's very bloody good at, at, at what he does. He's a, he's a good speaker. Um, I will give him his flowers where, where it's due there. It is very exciting news, nevertheless, mate, regardless of my sort of personal agenda, I guess we could call it. Um, I don't really have that much of an issue with him. I just think he's a bit of a cock. Um, now, the North Stand, mate, I, my season ticket used to be there. I know frauds, heart of the halt in the North Stand. Sat in the North Stand <laughs> in the Championship. Um, and... It's it's quite clear, and it's a bun. I mean, even when it was built, it wasn't necessarily state of the art back in the 1970s. It looks like an airport terminal, mate. This is something that has been long overdue. Looking at the sort of the pictures, and and I'll put them on screen if I remember, but I'm sure you guys have all seen them by now from the article. Th this is what we need, realistically, isn't it, mate? This is how you begin to take the steps to the next level. Yeah, 100%, mate, 100%. I think it's, um, 
yeah, it's the first checkbox, isn't it? For these new owners, it's like, right. Every other stand is, is oh, well, I suppose I'll, I'll get onto that. But yeah, all, it, it definitely sort of, uh, when you're sat in the north, the north is the best place to sit in Villa Park because you get to look at all of the yeah. better stands. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> you don't have to look so at it. it's like, um, whereas like it is, yeah, when you've got the whole tent at one end of the north at the other, it sort of pales in uh, insignificance really. But yeah, it's it's something that I think, will change Villa Park immeasurably, especially if you're joining onto the Trinity Road and the Doug Ellis. I thought it was interesting that changes are coming to the Trinity Road rather than the Doug Ellis. I know they're mostly in hospitality areas and stuff like that, but the Trinity Road, I, I still maintain, is a beautiful stand. I think it really, I think yeah. it's, a, it's a shame that obviously you've got the whole thing, which takes all of the glory, but I think in its own right, the Trinity Road is still a beautiful stand. It's still like very large, it's still relatively modern. If I'm not mistaken, I think it was built around the turn of the century. Um, so it's not, not that old, really, when you compare it to the North Sound, which is like, you know, twice as old. Um, and it's where your house uh, as well. Exactly, exactly, is where I sit myself. So, um, yeah, it'd be, I, th- I thought the Doug Ellis would be next on the hit list, but yeah, for, it's mostly to do with hospitality and stuff like that. And I think um, I'm all for these developments. I think they're very, like, all looks very impressive. Uh, I think this sort of transition away from being just a football stadium is, is what most clubs are striving towards now. So it's going to do a lot more than just host football matches. You know, they want it to be a sort of almost an entertainment complex, if you will. And, and so I, I suppose we're following the norm in that in that sense. Um, the big thing for me, mate, is is access and transport. That's what they've yeah. got to get right. Is like because Villa Park is a nightmare. I, know, I get the train in, and it is a nightmare, mate. Honestly, to God, it, like you're queuing up like a mile up the street. The car parks are full. It's gridlock, and it's like if you want to add like another ten thousand people to that, that's like potentially in a, like you know five, six, six thousand cars, another. Th- a few thousand trying to get on public transport. Like not, not many people are walking to games, are we? Because uh, like apparently no Villa fans live in Birmingham. Um, so that's the thing <laughs> they've got. That's, that's what they've got to get right. Is like if you, yeah. you want to add all this stuff, brilliant. You want to add more people to the games, brilliant. But how that affects? Because you've got a lot of housing around Villa Park, so it's not like you yeah. can like flatten a local area and build a big car park. It's like it's housing. So it's like it'd be very interesting to see how they do that. But now I'm very excited, mate. Yeah, I, I think as well like on that sort of. I think that on the Doug, that's I think that's what prohibited them from kind of mirroring the Trinity because of the housing that's behind. And I think yes, they, yes, I think they originally kind of were able to move the road back a bit further, but there's obviously the issue of the people who live there. Um, and obviously, all this is like pre pre submission, essentially. Like you know, we're being warned, Villa fans are getting their say on the matter, and of course, that will kind of go out to the immediate residents of the area. Uh, it's, and it's going to be interesting, mate, because I think, it, you know, as you say, the infrastructure isn't there for 50,000 people come in, uh, you know, once every fortnight to come and watch the villa. It's not like it's not even like there's a park and ride system. Like if that could work, I know there's something like that at Edge Baston, I'm fairly sure for the cricket. Um, you've got I mean, not many grounds have two train stations, but, you know, <laughs> both Witten and Aston Station, you may as well have a bus stop rather than a train station, do you know what I mean? It's it's useless. Um, and yeah, it, it, it's something that I think has probably prohibited things moving forward a bit quicker, especially when you look at, because, you know, you could easily just flatten three of the stands, you know, completely build around the whole, do that. Whatever you want, that isn't the issue. The issue that comes is, of course, the ramifications on the local area and, the infrastructure and you know we keep you know Christian Perzo saying all these things you know in his interview he's saying how of course this is a consideration he's mentioned it before as well it's not the first time we we sat on this podcast and spoke about transport mate um it's going to be interesting to see how the club tackles this with the local council and you know I'm I'm no uh expert when it comes to uh you know small town law and order and and stuff like this you know my knowledge extends as far as parks and rec so um city planning that's that's all i know really um it's going to be interesting mate and i think you know there was there's been talks as well you know fifty thousand is just the initial sort of figure that we're looking at with then the view of raising that again to sixty thousand. it's interesting because as well perzo mentioned mate uh he 
foresees Villa Park being one of the you know main venues for England's 2028 Euro bid, I think, or the UK's. Um, which again, you know, that's something that I mean, surely it goes without saying Villa Park anyway is, but I think 50,000 seats, a lot more corporate hospitality, all of this stuff, it just looks a lot nicer when you, you know, you, you're looking at, at hosting a major tour, especially when we're looking at the um, the kind of the venues that have been banded about for the USA, kind of the Mexico World Cup. Huge stadiums, mate, huge arenas, the biggest and the best that they have to offer in, in, in the Americas. Um, so, you know, Villa Park has to be a destination that isn't just about Aston Villa at the end of the day. And that's something that I think, although some people may not like that, we've kind of got to, we've got to take that on the chin, really, haven't we? Yeah, that's, that's what it is, mate. That's what it is. It's like you look at what Spurs have done with their ground um, and you're seeing more and more that sports events um, are trying to become like whole day outs and stuff like that. And, and you look at what's going on around the ground and what you're able to do, especially for kids and stuff like that, is um, that's where the priority is now. It's, it's not just about sort of rocking up, getting your balti pie, losing 1-0 and going home. It's, it's, it's about the, the holistic day now. And so, um, yeah, as, as I said, I, I think um, whilst I think people understandably find that a little bit alien, um, I think that's where it comes to change can sometimes be a bit of a daunting thing. I think, especially when, um, you know, we're, we're a club built on history and, and traditions, it is going to feel like a little bit of a step out of the norm. Um, but that is, that's the, that's the modern game and that's what it's becoming. And I think it's, it's sort of um, something that is a given. It's, it's not something that we can try and step out of. It's not something we can try and be different in because, Unfortunately, that's the way that every club is going for. So on just fitting in and going with the trend, um, this is what you have to provide. And um, yeah, it's going to be different, mate. But I think we can all agree whatever they put in is, is going to be current, better than the current North Stand. Uh, and it'll be really interesting to do with, with the club shop and, and what was Villa Village, as I'm sure you and I knew it as kids, mate. Um, and everything that they do that's really important and I think that's part of this development or redevelopment I should say um, and so what they do with that whole area is is going to be really cool yeah I, I, I like the sound of Villa Live and it's giving Box Park energy when you look at the sort of the, the, the concept art that we're seeing you know you can imagine that place again you know during a tournament as, as it, you know we've seen places like Box Park obviously host Watch parties, you can see it being used for international football, uh, away games. I think, you know, as every day passes, we're getting closer to sort of losing that 3 p.m. watershed. So as soon as that happens, you're essentially lifting the lid. You can you can do a ticketed event, not only just for away games, but you could have people in there for home games who haven't got a ticket. Yeah. You know, charge people a fiver to come in. I'm sure people would do it just for the atmosphere. Um, Christian, you can have that idea for free, but, you know, if you want any more, you'll have to come speak to us at the Villa Filler podcast. Um but it's interesting, mate, and Villa needed this sort of positive PR after the shit show that was the, the, the release of the training line with Castore or Castore. Yes. I don't know how to pronounce it. You guys let us know in the comments. I, I, I feel like I've made my feelings pretty clear on Twitter about it. It's absolutely shocking. That grey polo, abysmal, 50 quid for that. It's shocking. And all, the comparisons have been drawn between the Wolves range and how much that is costing. Uh, I was actually listening to um, to Neil for the Love of Paul McGrath podcast earlier on his live. Um, and from what he was saying and what he's read, it sounds like um, Wolves' partnership with Castore is strictly for the on-field stuff and where the licensing comes in... Uh, Wolves and Fanatics essentially produce the garments and, and the, the you know the the, the tracksuit bums all that stuff off their own back and it's not with Castore. It sounds like our deal is much more exclusive and you know everything is being produced and then fulfilled by Fanatics, um, but with Castore. So that may explain a bit of a price increase, but you can't justify like seventy five quid for a, a, a track jacket or a, a middle base layer. Uh, and nearly 45, 50 quid for a, a training top, mate. It's, it's abysmal, especially like, you know, we're in, a, we're in a cost of living crisis, for goodness sake. How can they justify that? 
Yeah, it's it's yeah. You know the worst part is for me, mate. And like, I just I felt I feel so neutral on on Castore. Is if we're like all of the clubs that I've seen them produce kits for, it's just been really run of the mill. That nothing has. They're not particularly brave with their designs. And look, that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing because you know, like we'll all agree that you know. A villa kit, it's hard, especially a home kit, it's hard to be too imaginative, right? It's it's yeah. claret body with blue sleeves. That's the way it always has been. That's the way it will always be. And you can't deviate. You can't do anything too crazy with that. But like, you know, you look at the Wolves kits they've produced in recent years, the Newcastle numbers. Um, so fair, some of the stuff they've done with Rangers has been pretty good, but there's been some pretty bad away and third kits that have come with that. Um, so it's like, it, they're very sort of middle of the road. And that's how I felt with the training kits. It's like, look, like, if this was like to die for material, then like okay, I, if it's but it's that's just like really bought like standard stuff. It is like your Castore logo, your Villa badge on a little like blue. It's like there's nothing really much to it, and so yeah, the pricing is is crazy, mate. And I think we're, I think it's starting to make perhaps people not necessarily realize because I think we knew it, but perhaps appreciate how much of a good thing we had with Kappa. I think they really did do a, a fantastic job. They didn't miss a beat. Um, I know people had priced like issues with sort of like quality and everything like that, but I think that got better progressively as, as the seasons went by. I think when you compare it to the sort of the season that we came up to our most recent, I think it definitely improved. And so look, I, I think it's, I guess when you've got stadium redevelopments and you're targeting all these players and stuff like that, and you and I have been saying for the longest time that at some point the club has started to recuperate all the money that it's shelling out. It feels like every season we're just shelling out money on on players and, and now stadium development and everything like this. And it's like, it's constant. So is that it has to come back in at some point and it's just you don't want to see it be at the expense of the fans and, and nor do you want to see that much of an increase. I think uh, we can't, sit here and be naive and say that we expect everything to say we want to climb the leagues and we want to get towards the upper echelons of the Premier League but everything to stay the same price match tickets don't stay the same price but at that steep of an increase at the moment um, yeah I, I, I can see why people are pretty, pretty disgruntled mate and um, maybe it's something that they'll bear in mind for the official kit release I mean look they've, they've got ways to if, they, if the kit drops and it's 45 quid for a men's like home shirt then this matter is quickly forgotten. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> <Yeah>. oh, sweet. <laughs> Amazing. Thanks, Castor. So it's like they've, they've got, a, maybe they're just testing the water ahead of the, the kit launch and everything like that. And um, obviously the club have got focus on the new badge and everything like that as well, um, which will come into effect for, for next season. Um, so yeah, a lot of expenditure at the moment. I, I get that they've got to try and get, you know, increase their revenue, but yeah, you, you don't want it to be, especially on training stuff. Yeah, that's the thing. And like, I think the thing with the training stuff is like, not everyone's going to be able to afford a replica shirt. So if you can get a training shirt for like half the price, yeah. you, you know, you're still wearing something new. You're still repping the club. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, in fact, I'd encourage that generally if it's cheaper. Like you don't need to buy the shirt. Don't feel like you have to buy the shirt. I do because I, I'm a freak, but like you shouldn't have to, like nobody should have to feel that way, especially, you know, like it's, it's probably like when we, it's probably only since we kind of turned four or five, mate, that clubs started to sort of ditch the, the old way with, with kits where it was, you know, a kit would last you one or two years or, you know, sometimes for an away or a third kit, two or three years. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, it's kind of, it, it's pivoted to, a new kit every year and then there's a third kit and then there's a fourth kit and then there's a 50th kit if you're Napoli um it's crazy it's ridiculous don't feel like you have to buy it and of course and as well the thing the thing that some people are saying is mate you don't have to buy it and then people are completely right you do not have to buy it don't feel pressured to whatsoever but um I can't help but feel like the club have shat the bed a little bit with that one um but I mean at the end of the season it'll be like 20 quid anyway so um Pick up some bargains at the end of the season. That's what I do, guys. Um, but yeah, that's probably a good place to leave this episode, Dan. Nice little update. It's great to be back with you, mate. And yes, sir. You know, we'll have another transfer rumor mill coming at you guys shortly. Got, again, you know, I keep saying it, but we have, we have some exciting things in the work. We're spinning plates. We're trying to make things happen. Speaking to a lot of people. We're going to have some interesting content for you guys over the coming months. Um, 
And so mate, if you enjoyed, I think it's eleven days to Warsaw in preseason. Isn't that's that what we got terrifying? Do. Yeah, I know, mate. It's it's coming. So by Are the you time going? I um in the it's in the works in the works. I'm trying to get tickets. Out. I'm sorting out with work and dates and everything like yeah. that. I'm dying to be there. I'm assuming you're going as well, mate. I'm not actually. Um, I'm, I'm. Are you I'm not? This one are you not? Wow. Yeah. wow. I'm giving this um, one a mess. But yeah, the fact of the matter is, mate. I, I'm guessing by the time this podcast podcast goes out, it might even be ten. Um, but the day recording, it's eleven days, so just over a week and a half until we're uh, we're at the best cut and pre seasons underway, mate. And we get the Villa boys back on us. I'm paying for fucking Villa TV passes and all that shite. So, yeah, can't wait, <laughs> <laughs> mate. That's do, do you know what? that's the thing is that it's not pre seasons that I've also to visit. So nah, um, gotta get the other yeah. best cut, haven't you? I'm I'm gutted not to be going, mate. But um, I'm compro- I'm I'm get I'm actually getting to a few women's Euros games. There's a few up near me. And uh, yes, yes, going to see. I think it's France, Italy at Rotherham, and then um, we've got quarterfinals tickets at Bramall Lane. So that'll be. I'm at the semi at Bramall weekend. Lane, actually. Oh, are you? Do you know what? I I'm am. See, I do am. you know what? I'll I'll see if we can make something work, mate. We'll see if we can make something yeah, work. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, Anyway, enough of Dan and I planning <laughs> when we're next going to see each other on the podcast, guys. If you enjoyed this, hit a like, comment your thoughts below on the stadium redevelopment and uh, Castore and subscribe if you know. Up the villa.